the earliest people did not have bridges. When they came to a river, they had to stay on their own side, unless it was shallow enough to wade across. These early crossing points were called fords. The problem was that more and more people came to rely on getting across the river. If it was in flood, people couldn't get across. So they started to look for alternatives. The first bridges were simply logs or slabs of stone laid across the river. If the river was too wide they might put a pile of rocks or a set of timber piles in the river to support the ends of the logs or slabs of stone. The problem with this type of structure is that it is weakest in the middle of the span so that if it collapses, someone is likely to be drowned. The Romans were the first people to develop an improved design. They invented the arch and used it to build bigger and stronger bridges and aqueducts, some of which survive today. The main difficulty is in constructing an arch in the first place. This is done using a wooden framework once the arch has been constructed it is very strong and can remain standing as long as the materials last and the ends are secure. The keystone is very important because it carries the forces of the bridge load sideways into the next stones and so on round the arch until the weight is supported by the banks of the river. For over a thousand years clapper bridges and arch bridges made out of stone wood or brick were the only types of bridge in this country. Then in the 18th century came the Industrial Revolution. People learned to make iron in large quantities. The Darbys of Colebrookdale were the first people to use coke instead of charcoal to smelt iron. My name is Abraham Darby III. My grandfather invented the process of smelting iron with coke. I knew that building a bridge of iron would be a good demonstration of what we could do with this new process. You can see from the picture that it is still based on an arch. I built the bridge across the River Severn in Colebrookdale in 1777. The sections were cast in my foundry in Colebrookdale and then erected across the river. It is still there 229 years later. At the time it was considered a modern wonder of the world, and people came from far and wide to see it. People still come to see it, and now it is a World Heritage Site. The next important development in bridge construction came because of the railways. As they developed and linked the major cities of Britain, the railways needed to cross wider rivers, since many important cities are ports at the mouths of rivers. Many of these bridges and viaducts were still based on the arch but most of them were now built in brick. Many of them have carried trains for over 150 years, but some of the greatest engineers of the railway age were prepared to experiment with the new materials. They had learned a lot about the way forces acted on structures. They used the knowledge to construct stronger, lighter, more rigid bridges to carry the heavier and faster loads of the new age. One of the greatest of these engineers was Isambard Kingdom Brunel. I realize that as the arch bridge got bigger, more and more of its strength was being used to support its own weight. Engineers like myself used scientific experiment and mathematical calculation to find ways of strengthening a simple girder bridge. We combined many different methods, but the two main ones we used were to use struts and ties to make triangular shapes which are very rigid. The other great development was the suspension bridge, where the road bed is suspended from cables slung across the river. You can see the suspension bridge I designed across the Avon Gorge, near Bristol. Not all the early bridge designs were successful. At approximately 7.15 p.m. on the stormy night of December 28, 1879, the central navigation spans of the Tay Bridge collapsed into the Firth of Tay, taking with them a train, six carriages, and 75 people, 
When they wanted to put a railway bridge across the Firth of Forth, the engineers needed to make sure that it would survive the strong winds that had caused the Tay Bridge disaster. The engineers used a cantilever design. The bridge was made of steel, which could now be produced in large quantities by the Bessemer converter. The approaches to the bridge use a conventional truss construction. But the main spans are built from cantilevers, which support a metal section between them. The technology of bridge construction has continued to develop with new materials such as pre-stressed concrete and reinforced concrete. Engineers can also now use computer models to help them predict how bridges will react to different weather and load conditions. Whatever improvements have come about, they still make use of the ideas and designs of the great engineers of the past. By studying these ideas, we can learn more about design and construction in the modern world.